Dear all, here we are with a new chapter called Turbo Machinery. This is the fifth chapter of ME306 and it is chapter 12 in our textbook. Fluid machinery is a general term we use for devices that convert hydraulic energy to mechanical energy or vice versa. Hydraulic energy stored in a fluid can be in the form of elevation, pressure or speed. Mechanical energy, on the other hand, can be a moving piston or maybe a rotating shaft. The pump you see here is a power absorbing device. Fluid gets energized as it goes inside it. Work is done by a rotating shaft on the fluid to increase its pressure. Mechanical energy is converted into hydraulic energy. A wind turbine works in the opposite way. It is a power producing device. Kinetic energy of the blowing wind is converted into mechanical energy. It is used to rotate a shaft, which then produces electricity. This time, work is done by the fluid on the rotating shaft. Fluid machines can be of two types, positive displacement machines and tubo machines. Here you see the general working principle of positive displacement machines. Your heart, for example, is a positive displacement pump. Let's watch a short video to see how it works. The normal heart has two sides, a right side and a left side, and four chambers, the top receiving chambers, or atrium, and the lower chambers, which are thick-walled pumping chambers called ventricles. Red blood cell will come from either the superior vena cava or the inferior vena cava and enter into the right atrium. The blood then flows across the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle. The right ventricle then squeezes and ejects that blood cell into a vessel called the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery splits into two vessels, each going to the lungs. As that red blood cell makes its way through the lung, it returns through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium. That blood is now oxygenated. It's picked up oxygen, then goes across the mitral valve into the left ventricle, which does most of the work in terms of delivery of blood flow to the body. That blood cell is now ejected into the aorta, to some organ or muscle or skin in the human body. We just watched the general working principle of positive displacement machines. Go ahead and watch it again if it was a bit fast. In positive displacement machines, fluid is transferred by moving the boundaries of closed volumes that enclose the fluid. Chambers of the heart are these enclosing volumes. As these chambers expand and contract, blood gets sucked in and pushed out. All positive displacement fluid machines work with a similar logic. Let's watch how a gear pump works, for example. In this Wikipedia page, we see animations of external and internal type gear pumps. These are rotary type positive displacement pumps. In the external one shown above, Fluid is sucked into small volumes between the teeth of the gears, and as the gears rotate, it is transferred to the outlet at the top. This way, the fluid is continuously transported from one place to another. The internal gear pump shown below does a similar job. This time, fluid is transferred from left to right. Following the flow pad is a bit more tricky in this one. Just pay attention and watch again if you need. Before closing this positive displacement type fluid machines part, let's see what happens when your heart, which is a pump, fails. In a certain type of severe heart failure affecting the left side of the heart, a mechanical pump may need to be used to assist your heart. Let's watch a short video about it. In left-sided heart failure, the left ventricle is not able to pump enough blood to the body. The two types of left-handed heart failure are diastolic, where the left ventricle can't relax enough to fill with blood, and more commonly systolic, where the left ventricle can't contract strongly enough to push blood to the body. In severe or end-stage heart failure, the heart is getting weaker and doesn't respond to medication. For left-sided end-stage systolic heart failure, a doctor may recommend an implantable left ventricular assist device, or LVAD, to help the heart pump enough blood to the body.
An LVAD is a small mechanical pump implanted inside the chest or abdomen that takes over the job of the weak left ventricle. Blood flows from the left ventricle through an inflow tube to the pump. The pump pushes the blood through an outflow tube into the aorta. From here, the blood travels normally from the aorta to the rest of the body. A cable, called a drive line connects the LVAD pump inside the chest to a control unit located on the outside of the body. The control unit is a small computer that controls the functions of the pump and alerts the patient if there are any problems. The pump and control unit receive power through a cord connected to a battery pack. Finally, the control unit and battery pack are held in a lightweight patient pack. The second type of fluid machinery is called tuba machines, which is the subject of this chapter. For all tuba machines, the common components are the rotating shaft and the parts called blades, veins or buckets attached to the shaft. These parts also rotate with the shaft and they get in contact with the fluid. They either do work on the fluid to pressurize it or to give it a certain speed or the fluid does work on them so that the shaft can be rotated to do some useful task, such as providing the necessary thrust to an airplane or generating electricity. You see four different tuba machines in this slide. The first one is a cooling fan used in electronic devices such as computers. It pushes the air in one direction with a certain speed so that the heat generating electronic part can be cooled down. Second one is a pump that is used to pressurize liquids so that they can be moved inside pipes at the desired flow rate. Next one is a Pelton wheel, which is a hydraulic turbine that uses the stored energy in the fluid to generate electricity. And the last one is another type of hydraulic turbine called the Kaplan turbine. Pause the video here for a minute and try to see the common turbo machinery components in these images. The shaft and the rotating parts attached to it. Tuba machines can be classified in many different ways. Here you see a classification based on whether they absorb or produce power and further whether the working fluid is incompressible or compressible. On the far left we see the pump. Pumps are used to pressurize liquids such as water, oil or blood. The one shown here is a centrifugal pump, which will be studied in detail in this chapter. Fluid enters in here, parallel to the shaft. After the fluid gets sucked in, it turns radially as it passes over the rotating blades that are attached to the shaft. The fluid leaves the pump in the radial direction. The main fluid motion inside this pump is radial, therefore it's called a radial pump, or a centrifugal pump. We will spend most of our time in this chapter studying this pump. Next machine is the propeller. As you see, it is listed both as an incompressible and a compressible flow machine. Marine propellers, such as the one you see in this slide, are used in ships, boats and submarines. They work with incompressible water. But some aircrafts also use propellers, such as this one here. The high-speed air flowing over them can have a Mach number larger than 0.3 and the compressibility effects may be considerably large. As you see, the two propellers shown here have very different designs. One has three large blades and the other has several thin blades. What do you think is responsible for these design decisions? Next one is the fan. As you see, a fan looks quite similar to the aircraft propeller of the previous slide. Their main difference is the purpose of their use. In other words, the effect they create on the fluid. A propeller is used to create the thrust force necessary to move a ship or an aircraft. Its main job is to create enough pressure difference on the two sides of its blades, and this pressure difference creates the required thrust force. But the main purpose of using a fan is not to create a high pressure difference. The purpose is to create a desired flow rate. The one shown here is the fan of a wind tunnel. It has nothing to do with thrust force generation. 
Instead, we use it to generate the airflow rate necessary to perform experiments. These are also fans. The first one is used to generate a gentle breeze of air for the comfort of people in a room. Notice how similar its blades look like to those of a marine propeller. Almost identical. The second one is the cooling fan of a computer. This one looks more like an aircraft propeller. As you see, the fan is listed as a compressible flow machine, but it is better to list it under both incompressible and compressible, just like the propeller, because the last two fans shown here do not experience much compressibility effects. Next power absorbing tuba machine is the blower. The one you see here is a centrifugal blower. Notice how similar it looks to the centrifugal pump we saw earlier. The difference is that a blower works with a gas, not a liquid. When we search on Google for a blower, what we find looks more like this. This blower is typically used to blow away the leaves fallen from trees. And the final power absorbing machine we have here is the compressor. Compared to fans or blowers, they create much higher pressure ratios between their inlets and outlets. Similar to a pump, their main task is to pressurize a fluid, but this time a gas. The one you see here is an axial compressor. In axial flow tuba machines, the main flow direction is parallel to the rotating shaft, both at the inlet and at the outlet. The radial velocities are small. Radial compressors also exist, and they look like this. They are very similar to radial pumps. At the inlet, the flow is parallel to the rotating shaft, but as the fluid passes over the rotating impeller blades, it turns and gains radial velocity. The original axial compressor shown in this slide is a multi-stage compressor. As you see, it has several rows of blades attached to the shaft. It has a low pressure and a high pressure part. The required pressure ratio is so high that it can only be achieved by using two parts together. Compressors are used in several different applications, such as inside gas and steam turbines that are used to generate electricity in power plants or in aircraft engines. In these applications, we use axial compressors like the one shown here. Compressors are also used in natural gas pumping stations so that the gas can be carried hundreds of kilometers inside pipes. The following video gives a few details about compressing natural gas. Compression. Natural gas needs to be compressed for transport. In other words, the pressure must be increased. In the compressor station, modified aircraft turbines produce the energy necessary to drive the compressors which compress the natural gas to 70 bar. As a comparison, the 70 bar of pressure produced here is equal to the pressure you would find at a water depth of 700 meters. Cooling. The gas heats up while being compressed. Therefore, after compression, it must be cooled down in gas coolers before the forwarding stage. A ventilator blows cool air over the pipelines, which are covered with fins. Here the gas is cooled from temperatures of up to 55 degrees Celsius down to roughly 30 degrees Celsius. If you want, you can find more technical videos about the compressors used in natural gas stations. Turbochargers used in automobiles also make use of compressors. Compressors also have an important role in refrigeration cycles. Let's now have a look at the power producing tuba machines. The first one is the Pelton wheel. It has several buckets attached to a rotating wheel. High speed fluid jets hit these buckets and rotate the wheel. Following video shows what an actual Pelton wheel used in a power plant for electricity generation purposes looks like. This video is from Void, one of the leading turbine manufacturers in the world. 
you can visit their website to learn more details of their products. Other big manufacturers are Siemens and General Electric. Here you see two Pelton wheel turbines side by side. This is the main water inlet. It is divided into six branches. At the end of each branch, there is a nozzle to create a flow jet. The yellow part is used to open or close the nozzle, and the red part can slide inside the nozzle to adjust the flow rate. The jets coming out of the nozzles hit the buckets and exert force on them, which results in rotation. Largest Pelton wheels used in hydraulic power plants can produce up to 200 megawatts of power. The next item in our chart is called the hydraulic turbine. Actually, Pelton wheels can also be counted as hydraulic turbines, but when we say hydraulic turbine, we typically mean fences or Kaplan types. They are used in dams to generate electricity. Depending on the height of the water reservoir behind the dam and the flow rate that can be fed into the turbine, either a Francis or a Kaplan type can be used. Here you see the runner of a Francis type turbine, designed for one of the largest dams in the world, the Three Gorges Dam in China. This dam has 32 Francis turbines, each producing 700 megawatts of power. In total, the dam's capacity exceeds 22 gigawatts, which is larger than the total capacity of all dams in Turkey. Atatürk Dam is one of the largest dams in Turkey. It has eight Francis-type turbines, each producing 300 megawatts of power. The next turbo machine is the steam turbine. Steam turbines are very important because they produce about 80% of the world's electricity. Afshin Elbistan Thermal Power Plant in Turkey has four steam turbines, each producing 344 megawatts of power. Steam turbines are large, complicated and expensive machines. You can find several nice videos on the internet explaining their components and general working principle. Next machine is the gas turbine. Unlike a steam turbine, which makes use of hot steam obtained by boiling water to generate electricity, a gas turbine makes use of gases produced by a combustion process. Gas turbines can be used to generate electricity in natural gas power plants. They are also used to generate thrust force in the jet engines of aircrafts. Let's watch a short video about how they work. If you follow the electricity you use at home or at work back through the power lines to your local power plant, you'll see that the process most likely starts with the work of the gas turbine, the very heart of the power plant. First, air is drawn in through one end of the turbine. In the compressor section of the turbine, all those air molecules are squeezed together, similar to a bicycle pump squeezing air into a tire. As the air is squeezed, it gets hotter and the pressure increases. Next, fuel is injected into the combustor where it mixes with the hot, compressed air and is burned. This is chemical energy at work. Essentially, this is what happens in your family car's engine, but at about 2,900 times more horsepower. Actually, it's exactly like the turbine engines on jet airplanes. The hot gas created from the ignited mixture moves through the turbine blades, forcing them to spin at more than 3,000 RPMs chemical energy has now been converted into mechanical energy. The turbine then captures energy from the expanding gas, which causes the drive shaft, which is connected to the generator, to rotate. That generator has a large magnet surrounded by coils of copper wire. When that magnet gets rotating fast, it creates a powerful magnetic field that lines up electrons around the coils and causes them to move. The rotating mechanical energy has now been converted into electrical energy because the movement of electrons through a wire is electricity. In what's called a combined cycle power plant, the gas turbine can be used in combination with a steam turbine to generate 50% more power. The hot exhaust generated from the gas turbine is used to create steam and a boiler. 
which then spins the steam turbine blades with their own drive shaft that turns the generator. What you end up with is the most efficient system for converting fuel into energy. And that's your GE Gas Turbine 101. As you watched in the video, gas turbines have also compressors in them, and they can be combined with steam turbines to generate more power. The final item in our list is the wind turbine. These slides are a bit dated and they say that Turkey's installed wind energy capacity is about 6 gigawatts as of 2017. That number raised to about 9 gigawatts by 2020. The total available wind energy capacity of Turkey is known to be 48 gigawatts. This is more than half of the electricity Turkey currently produces from all its renewable and non-renewable resources. And the world's production is written to be about 490 gigawatts. As of 2020, the number is about 600 gigawatts, which is about 5% of the world's current electricity demand. As you see here, there are several different wind turbine types. Some has vertical and some has horizontal rotating shafts. But today the most commonly used design is the horizontal axis wind turbine with three blades, which is also the one shown in our slide. Let's finish this part of the turbo machinery chapter by watching a video about how wind turbines work. You've probably seen a wind farm. But do you know how wind force is converted into electrical energy? We are going to show you how a wind turbine works. Each wind turbine has a wind vane at the top that indicates the wind direction. This allows the turbine to rotate on the tower and face the wind. The blades also rotate on their axis for maximum resistance. Wind force, that is the kinetic energy contained in moving air currents, spins the blades. These are designed to fully capture its energy. They can be as long as 60 meters each and are made of very light and resistant materials for ease of movement. This is why they can produce energy even with very light winds, starting from about 11 kilometers per hour. With very strong winds, above 90 kilometers per hour, the blades are placed in the feathered position and the turbine stops spinning for safety reasons. The blades are attached to the wind turbine through the hub, which is coupled to the low speed shaft. The low speed shaft is given this name because it spins at the same speed of the blades, between 7 and 12 revolutions per minute. To produce electricity, it is necessary to increase the turning speed of the low speed shaft. That is the mission of the gearbox, which raises the speed over a hundred times and transfers it to the high speed shaft. The high-speed shaft that rotates it up to 1500 revolutions per minute is connected to a generator. The generator converts the kinetic energy into electricity, a source of energy that is easier to transport and use. The electricity produced in the generator as direct current is conducted through the interior of the tower to the base. There, a converter transforms it into alternating current, which is the most commonly used kind, and a transformer raises the voltage for transport inside the wind farm. From each turbine, alternating current is sent to the substation through underground cables. Here, the voltage is increased again to feed it into the power grid and transport it to end consumers. This is the end of the first part of Chapter 5.